When you first hook up your Kinsey planter to your Isobus tractor, one of the first icons that we will go into or talk about today will be your Kinsey icon located in A in the upper side of the display. So if we press on the Kinsey icon, it will bring us up to our planter menu or more specifically our planter control menu. Underneath here we have five different tabs or buttons that we need to go into and look and check on certain items system expectations that we need to put into our display. The first one we will look at is area. So if we press the area tab, this will bring up our area counters. It will show us which ones are active. We can add as many area counters in as we want, specifically to farm field grower. As long as there's a check mark beside it, it is active, so it's calculating acres. It will also show on your screen. So if it has a check mark beside it, it will be displayed on our planting screen. Off to the right side, you will notice an on or off button. That's where we turn on or off those acre counters. As you can see down below, you will have new or done down there. New is, would be if we want to create a new area counter. Once we create our new area counter, we would press the done side and it would show up underneath our area counter tab here. You will also notice underneath here, we have a planter lifetime area or acres. This is where we can show or display our lifetime area of the machine, how many acres the machine has seen in its lifetime. If we press the previous tab and go back, here's where we go to our layout manager. Here's where we can set up our different pages that we can view on the Kinsey side of our display. We can have one through six pages. You will notice if you press them, it will display through we will have a check mark beside them if they are active. So right now we are showing up to three pages. If we go down to layout, here's where we can change our layout or how things look on that display. We can reset them. Once we reset and get our pages laid out, we simply press done and will take us back to our main planting menu. Underneath the settings tab, there are 10 different items that we can look at in here. The first one that will come up is our population monitoring. If we hit population monitoring tab, this is where our thresholds are. When does it kick our alarm on for a high threshold? When does it set the alarm on for the low threshold, for our singulation threshold, and also our response time? These items are all pre-populated in your firmware through your PMM, so these things will pre-populate for you. You can go in and change them if you so desire, but they will pre-populate for you. If we press our previous tab and go back, we come into speed input. This is where we're gonna select our ground source or our speed source. Most of us will run on the automatic side. Automatic meaning it's going to go out and look for GPS first. If we do not find GPS, it's gonna look for a radar input. If it doesn't find radar, it's going to look for some other source of speed input into the planter. This is where we can also go in and put in our pulses per mile for our motion sensor or jump start sensor. And if we so choose, we can go in and put in a manual ground speed so we can run the planter manually with a manual ground speed or check items on the planter. If we press previous and come back, we can now go to pneumatic downforce. Underneath the pneumatic downforce tab, it gives us our force formula of four pounds per square inch by uh, times are multiplied by our pressure. We can also set a low downforce alarm. And this is also where we can zero out our pneumatic down pressure gauge or sensor. If we press the previous tab and come back, we can now look at our vacuum setting. Vacuum setting is once again just alarm times. It sets our low threshold alarm, our response, and also again, we can zero out our gauge or sensor. If we come back to previous, if we scroll down, it brings us up four new items to look at. The first one is bulk fill pressure. Bulk fill pressure is our low threshold alarm, our response time, and also to zero or clear out our gauge or sensor on the planter. Bulk fill scale. Bulk fill scale is our low threshold alarm. 
when do I want the alarm to go off when I have X amount of pounds left in the tank. So I can preset this at 100 pounds of seed in the tank. I want the alarm to go off. I know at 50 pounds I want the alarm to go off. However you choose to set that. You can also choose to set your response time in seconds how long this will alarm you till you acknowledge or okay that alarm. Seed sensor sensitivity. Seed sensor sensitivity will change with our crop types. So if we select a crop, for instance soybeans, our sensitivity is 10. That's a default setting, so that default setting changes each time we change a crop. The best way to remember is these are preset from the factory for certain crops. Should we need to adjust up or down to increase or decrease our sensitivity? Just remember the lower the number, the less sensitive it is. The higher the number, the more sensitive it is. When you are done, you simply press the done button. We'll take you back to our MUX bus system. On our MUX bus system, this is where all of our sensors are located on the planter. For instance, our jump start sensor, our shaft sensors, our row unit sensors, and any of our auxiliary sensors, such as our bulk fill scale sensor, pneumatic down pressure sensor, bulk fill pressure, vacuum in inches. This is where we also go to find if we should have a bad sensor and we need to change one out. This is where we go to change that sensor out. It's always going to default to the jump start sensor. The things we need to watch is what is the status of that sensor. Is it okay? Is it unassigned? Is there an error code? If we have a bad sensor, this is where we would go to remove and add in our new sensor. So if we simply press on jump start sensor, we can scroll down through and find our specific sensor that is bad. In this case, row eight on the rear is our bad sensor. We need to remove that sensor. So simply by hitting the remove button, you'll notice row eight, the status has now changed to unassigned. Now I can go back unplug my bad sensor in row 8, remove it from the shank or the row unit, install my new sensor into the row unit, go ahead and plug it in, come back to your display, and simply hit add. You'll notice an audible alarm as it learns the sensor into the system and our status has now changed to OK. Once we have that done, we can go back to previous, if we scroll down again, it brings us up two more tabs. These other two tabs are in the 2.0 software this year. The first one is Diagnostics. Underneath the Diagnostics tab, it gives us several different things to look at. The first one is our PMM voltage. How much voltage is going back to our PMM to control it? Also gives us our MUX bus power and signal. How much power is on our power wire? how much power is on our signal wire. Also gives us our CAN high and low voltages. Tells us our implement switch status, our rate control speed, our valves, and also the status of our sensors back there. If we press on section control, section control tells us what the output is of the clutches, what the task controller is telling the clutches to do, what the user has said and what our override is. So this is a double check of the system on our clutch status. Are the clutches on or off? Who is telling what or who to control? If we press the previous tab and come back and we press our seed count tab, here's where we can look at seed counts on the various sensors on the planter. We have a 16 row planter hooked up. If we're planting in the field, our number off to the right side, the 0.0, .0 that will come up and that will show us our seeds per second. Once again, a double check of the meter or the sensor. Should I think I have a problem? How do I know if the meter is working correctly? How do I know if the sensor is counting correctly? This would be a way to double check. The best way to know for sure is to get out and do an infield check in the dirt so we know exactly what is happening. If we come back, press the previous tab twice, Underneath advanced settings, we have a tractor wheel speed, 
We also have an ISO bus name, which is, learns our controllers into the machine. And we also have our hydraulic drive gear ratio if we are so equipped with hydraulic drive. These will preload and preset automatically by our machine. It is machine specific when we configure our machine. If we press our previous tabs, we can go to the configure button, but guys, the configure button is only used the first time that we configure the PMM to the planter. This is where we learn in all the sensors. This is where we tell it what machine we have, a 3600, a 3660, a 3700. Is it a standard hopper machine? Is it a bulk fill machine? Is it a bulk fill with scale? Does it have pneumatic down pressure? Is it hydraulic drive equipped? It is a six step process that will be done by your dealer when you receive your new machine. The only time you gentlemen would have to go to the configure button should we have to reconfigure the planter and monitor. And this is all outlined in your operator's manual or your ISOBUS manual on how to configure or reconfigure your machine. The last tab down here in the bottom left hand corner is our update button. Should we need to update firmware in the modules that we talked about earlier on the machine, the PMM or the PCM, this is where we would go to update the firmware in those modules. To update firmware, we're going to refer you back to your dealer to get the specific firmware for your planter and the modules on your planter. As we leave the planter control side of things, if we simply hit our page button in the upper right hand corner, this is where we come to our Kinsey screen. This is what we would call a main planting screen on the display. You will notice our icons on the right hand side change now. The main ones that we need to look at, number one at the top here, we have an on or off button. On or off tells us if we shut the machine off. So when we hit the off button, this is the master control or master switch of the machine. So when we shut things off, the clutches shut off and the hydraulic drive shuts off. When we turn them on, clutches will engage or be able to work or run, drive the machine. Hydraulic drive will be able to run also. You can set your pages up different ways. As you notice up here in our upper right hand corner, we have page button and we have one of three pages. Right now you'll notice we have a population, a singulation, downforce, our four clutch sections, and also our bar graph displayed down here. If I hit the H button or the screen lock button, which is simply a padlock, if I press that tab, you'll notice how the colors change on the display or on that page. So if I do not want to see downforce on this page, for instance, I can scroll through to whatever I want to see on this page. I would like to see tank weight. What is in my ASD or my bulk fill tanks? Once I have selected what I want, I simply go back and I lock the screen. And now you notice we got rid of down pressure and our tank weight is displayed now. As we scroll through our pages, once again, you can set these pages up however you'd like through your layout manager that we just talked about on the planner menu screen. Once again, we can unlock and we can change whatever we want to see. Here's acres to empty. This is definitely a user preference, so you gentlemen can set up those pages however you would like to see those. If you need help, please refer to your operator's manual. It walks you through step by step on how to do those functions. Some more very important functions uh, on the display. Number one is our population button. It will be the B letter and will show you green. It will show you a seed at the top, your population, and say pop at the bottom. If you press that icon or tab, here's where we go in to select a basic population or if we have prescription maps loaded, we can go to the prescription side. Down below here we have six different preset uh, populations that we can look at. To change those, you simply tap edit presets. You can go through and change those populations so you desire. Once you are done, 
you hit the done tab and save it. Also another feature in your population settings tab is what we call our prime button. So with the planter down, hydraulics engaged for our hydraulic drive, our vacuum fan on, we have seed to our meters. If we press the prime button one time, it will come up and tell us operation and progress. It is turning the meters one revolution to prime the meters or load our discs, load our fingers, whatever meter that we have in the system. So that is the prime feature. If we hit our previous tab and come back, the next one we're going to look at is our crop type. Here's where we go to select our different crops. Now the crop type menu will change depending on what planter you have, meaning do you have mechanical meters, a finger meter and brush meter, or do you have the vacuum meters? This particular machine does have the vacuum meters in it. So my first tab is my corn one. That is for the 39 cell corn disc, the blue seed disc. You will know once you change your crop type, it asks you, make sure all seed discs are installed in all meters. If they are, you simply press done. We also have the green 24 cell disc. The standard soybean disc is the 60 cell. Once again, make sure you have changed the disc in all the meters. But this is where you go to select your crop type. What crop am I planting? When we look at our C icon or tab on the display, that is our jump start button. What the jump start button does is it is a override of the system. By pressing the jump start button, it starts the drive in motion. It starts to turn the drive, it will drop seed. It is used in conjunction with our jump start sensor that we talked about earlier on the planter. To make the jump start active or work, you simply press and hold the jump start button. As long as you hold it, the drive will turn. Once you let go, the drive does stop. When we look at our planter menu button, if we press the planter menu button, we will go back to our planter control that we talked about earlier. Here's where we set our area, our layout, we can check our settings, configure the planter, and also do any updates. Once we're on the planter menu, planter control screen, if we want to go back to our main planting screen on our display to show us our bar graph, our clutch sections, our master switch, we simply hit the page button in the top right hand corner of the display. There it takes us back to our main planting menu. Should we need to get back to our Kinsey icon, the first one that popped up when we fired the display, when we hooked the planter to the tractor, we simply hit the up arrow button and here's our Kinsey icon displayed in tab A of the display.